Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade all right guys so uh let's get started so real quickly uh arrow uh, i decided to create arrow because i wanted to create a very simplistic way for beginners to experienced traders to be able to uh trade the foreign exchange market all right um i've learned that with the foreign exchange market you have to be able to see what's going on. And if your eyes aren't trained to see it, or your eyes haven't been looking at the charts for years, like mine have, it's very difficult to see at first. Uh, it's kind of like the matrix, if you guys have ever seen the movie. And so what I wanted to do was create, um, I wanted to create a visual layout uh, on the actual um, chart so that you get a better idea of what price is doing. And then I wanted to incorporate very simplistic strategies. So the rules to these strategies are very simple. Even, you know, there are 10, 11, and 12 year olds that are actually trading with this software. That's how simple the rules are. Uh, I want to create simplistic rules so that you don't get confused uh, and so that you can easily uh, have the opportunity to, um, you know, take trades, feel comfortable in taking the trades, and to have some success. All right. Uh, so without further ado, we will jump right into it. Uh, this right here is arrow. All right. This is version three. Version three is out. Everyone should have version three right now. Um, but version three is out and everyone should have that as of right now. All right. Uh, so you had to put that on as, as well. When you set up your charts most likely you're going to look uh like this give or take all right so it's gonna be white it's not gonna look exactly like this you're gonna have a grid on here where you have the crosses so i'm gonna give you guys uh my exact settings so that you guys can and actually let's do it this way guys let me let me do this from the uh let me do this from the AP. All right. I am on the VPS for Avoria Prime. And when you log in, you're usually going to have like four charts looking like this. I've got my reduced down to one. And so I want to give you guys the settings uh, that I utilize for your default chart. And then, of course, we'll help you set up your arrow chart. All right. So the first thing you guys want to do is once you've logged into your VPS or you've logged into your remote desktop, and you got logged in first thing you want to do is you want to log into your demo account all right uh, or into your live trading account so to do that inside metatrader 4 this app this program here is the metatrader 4 application this is the desktop application you also have it on your mobile device as well if you download the mobile app this software this program allows us to trade the foreign exchange market all right uh, and then the arrow software is what goes on top of the chart to give you the visual layout all right so first thing you want to do when you log in is you want to log into your trading account all right your actual broker account if you do not have a broker account or you do or you want to know you know which ones i may be potentially using uh send me a dm 
So direct message either on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, doesn't really matter. Uh, I can't give out the brokers in public, but I can let you know who I use. Now, here are the reasons why I use the brokers I use. Uh, number one, brokers I use, they have a good offering, which means they offer stocks indices, foreign exchange currency, cryptocurrency, uh, energy, things of that nature. They offer a lot of different asset classes that you know I have the potential to actually trade. Uh, number two, uh, they offer me zero dollar uh, fees when I'm actually depositing and withdrawing. So if I, deposit my, if I deposit $500, then my account will be credited with $500. If I would withdraw 500, I withdraw 500. They're not taking unnecessary fees uh you know from their standpoint uh number two um i'm sorry number three um they are an a book broker not a b book a book so to give you uh, the understanding of a book and b book a b book broker manipulates the market so a b book broker that broker hires people to trade against you all right they will manipulate in the market you know uh you know, if your price is getting ready to close at take profit and you're getting ready to make money, they will manipulate it so that your price won't close. Uh, they will um, jack the price up and then send it back down. All right. You, you know, you may see a real big spike on your chart, but then someone else's account doesn't have a big spike. That's because that broker manipulated the market to scare you or to knock you out of your trade and take all your money from you. That's what brokers do. Uh, some brokers, B book brokers, an A book broker, they don't care about that. All they care about is volume. So they're going to entice you to trade more because each trade you make, you have to pay a small commission for each trade. And so their their goal is to entice you to trade more often because the more you trade, the more fees you pay. Uh, but that's good because when they entice you, they typically have lower spreads. I'll explain the spreads later. They typically do not manipulate the market because they're A book brokers. So they send your trades directly to the banks. So you get the best uh, trade setups, the best movements, uh, no manipulation in the price. And um, it's uh, you know the exact same markets that, that the banks are trading. And so if you want to uh, know uh, A book brokers versus uh, B book brokers, uh, and you know, to the ones that I use, send me a message uh, on Instagram. I'm at Nate got the bag, uh, same as on Telegram. And I can, you know, I said, send me a direct message. I can actually send you guys that is there one on one, but I can't talk to you about it in, in public. Uh, so once you have that broker, you want to go on there and set up a demo account. Once you're ready to set up a live account, what you do is uh, you need to send in your, your your documents. So they're going to want to know proof of identity, so a passport or driver's license. And typically they're going to want to have a proof of residence. So like a, a, a utility bill or some sort. Once you send that. Then uh, they'll approve your account. And then you can put real money into your account once you're ready to start trading with real money. In the beginning, I always tell everybody, start off with a demo account uh, just to see how the software works. That way, if you make some mistakes in the very beginning, you're, that's fine. You finally get yourself into a rhythm of knowing how to use the software and the strategies, and then you flip over to a, a strategy. You know, uh, uh, that way, you can start making money and not make some of those costly mistakes in the beginning. All right? So to log into your account, First thing you want to do is you want to come into the software, hit file, open an account, and then whatever your broker is, you want to go to add new broker. You want to type in your broker here. So I'll type in one broker I use. You hit scan. You wait for it. Here we go. So once you set it up to broker, you're gonna have, so this broker I just pulled has a demo, has a live. So set up your account. Again, if you set up at the beginning, what you wanna do is double click on the demo. 
All right, make sure it's selected, hit next, select existing trade account, and then type in your login and password. Your login will always be your account number. All right, and then your password will always be your trader password. So the brokers are gonna send you two passwords, trader password, investor password. Always use the trader password. That's the one that will allow you to put trades in. The investor password is if, let's say for example, you have someone that wants to see how well you've been doing with Arrow, then what you'll do is you'll take the investor password and give them your account number and investor password, and they can just read only. So they'll be able to log into your account and just to be able to look around, but they won't be able to put any trades on. All right, so that's the difference between the trader password and the investor password. Once you've typed in both, you hit finish. And once you hit finish, it's gonna make a noise, ding, you've got mail, is what it'll say. You'll see down here at the bottom right-hand corner of the chart, it'll show you green and red bars, and it'll tell you how many kilobytes per second as you're running, and then your chart will be live. And you should be able to uh, like I said, see everything moving on your chart. All right, once that is done, your account is set up. So now you're logged into your actual broker account, all right? Once you're logged into your broker account, next, I'm gonna give you guys the settings so that you can get the chart set up the way that I have it for the default chart. We're gonna set up the two charts today, the default chart and the Arrow V3 chart, all right? First is default. So first thing you wanna do is in the black of the screen, just right click, come down to properties. Under properties, under colors, you're gonna go background is black, foreground white, grid is going to be white. Bar up, lime, bar down, change to red. Bull candle, change to lime. Bear candle, change to red. All right, take a picture of that, take a screenshot. Those are the settings. All right, next you wanna to come to common. You wanna make sure your chart shift and R scroll are, are checked, all right? You wanna come down here to candlesticks. Select candlesticks. You want to select show ask line, show period separators, and then turn off the grid. No, no show grid. So take a picture of this, take a screenshot. This is how your setting should be. Next, hit OK. And bada bing, bada boom, there is the chart. All right. As you can see, the candles that are heading up are green, the ones that are heading down are red. All right. It's clear on the back of the screen. Your period separators are here. This shows every 24 hours. All right, uh, and then you see you have a red line and a white line. Your red line is your ask line. Your white line is your bid line. All right, we'll go over that a little later on. Uh, so again, I'm gonna go back to those settings, right click on the black of the screen, come down to properties, go to colors. Please take a picture of that or a screenshot. That way you have those settings. All right, and then under common, those are the settings there. Please take a screenshot or a picture of that. That way you have your settings. All right. Once that is done, again, you hit OK. You then want to come here on your toolbar and hit M15, the M15. This is the 15 minute time frame. What this means is each one of these candlesticks took 15 minutes to form. So this candlestick here took 15 minutes to form. Once 15 minutes was up, the next piano stick started. All right, that's all that means. All right, um, once you set this here, next thing you wanna do is you wanna come up here to the template. And again, if you don't have all these here, guys, if you don't see this, then you wanna come to file, I'm sorry, view and toolbars. Under view and toolbars, you wanna turn on all four of these. So click all four of these until all four of these are checked. And then also under status bar and charts bar, select both of those. All right, once all six of those are turned on, you will see the exact same thing that I have here. All right, and then you actually, you wanna select the M15, and then you would come down here to this icon right here. This is the templates icon. Select that, and you wanna hit save template. Save template. You get this restrictions, that's fine. You hit okay. And then what you're gonna do is type this as default. This will be the default chart, all right? You see, I already have mine saved, so I'm not gonna save it again. Once you hit that, you hit default. 
you hit save, all right? Now, what does default do? So let's come over here to the H1, all right? So the H1, I'm sorry, there's a new chart. I've got a new chart up in here. And so to put the default chart on, what I wanna do is I wanna come up here to templates again, select templates, go to load template, select default, and then select open. And boom, it will automatically put the chart on there for you. You can change the time frame and everything you need to. That is what it does for you, all right? That is what it does. It just allows you to go ahead and put the default chart on at any time without having to go through all the settings all over again. All right, now once you have the default on here, next thing to do is to add arrow on. All right, so next you wanna to come to underneath charts. So the charts is here, underneath it you have the navigator. It's a gold folder with a gold star. You wanna select the navigator, all right? Once you selected the navigator, you then wanna come down here and you wanna to come to indicators. Next to indicators, there should be a plus sign. Select the plus sign to open up all the indicators and you should see arrow V3, arrow V3. This is the version three, this version just came out this past weekend. You wanna double click arrow V3, all right? Go to common, select allow DLL imports. So the first two should be selected. Take a screenshot or a picture of this. Under inputs, you then wanna, under your uh, alerts, so settings for alerts, both need to be true. Desktop alert, push notifications to your phone alert, need to be set to true, all right? Next is the money zone. Now the money zone should be set between 12 a.m. Central Standard Time and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, all right? Uh, and so the easiest way to do this is just to wait till 12 a.m. Central Standard Time, your time, and then set up the money zone, all right? So if you see here, the current candle we're on, if you look down here, down here, gives you the time frame. So you see here, it says 2021 0125. So that's January 1, 25, 2021. All right. And it says at 515. At 515. That's what time it is for my broker. Even though it's still January the 24th where I'm at, that's what time it is for my broker. They are, my broker is eight hours ahead of me. So 12 a.m. for me, I know starts at 0800 right here. I know this because I use this broker, all right? And because I know that you can see it says 800 there, 800 down here, 800, all right? And so when I'm putting arrow V3 on, I wanna set up my beginning time at 0800 and then I wanna add 12 to that because it's military time your broker will be in military time as well and you 2000 that is the money zone uh, the money zone is the best time to trade the foreign exchange because over 80 percent of all the money traded in forex is traded during that 12 hour time frame all right over 20 over 80 percent okay so um Let's see here. If your broker, and I can tell you right now, we are two hours. Let's see here. So we're on a 15 minute chart, right? We're on a 15 minute chart. So we are, uh, I'll give you one minute here. In one minute, we'll give it a minute. And then we're gonna be, uh, a total of, it's gonna be 9.30 my time. We're gonna be a total of two and a half hours from the start of the money zone, which is 10 candles, all right, 10 candles. So give it a chance, give it a second here to open up a new candle. It's about to be a new candle here every 15 minutes.
All right, so new candles, you can see. New candle just started right there. You can see down here, my broker's time says 5.30, all right? 05 says 5.30, that's 5.30 a.m. So 10 candles from now, you can count over. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for the most part, mine says 5.30, 10 candles is, enough, is two and a half hours. So whatever your broker time frame says down there, you see here, my current candle says 5.30, two and a half hours from now, would be the start of the money zone. So whatever your broker says, add two and a half hours. So if your broker right now is at 3.30, then it means the start of your money zone will be at 0600, six o'clock. If your broker right now says 15.30, then that means your, bro your, uh, your money zone starts at 1800. All right, so just add two and a half hours to whatever time it is right now on your broker server. That's the server time down there. And that will give you the start of the money zone. And then the end of the money zone will just be 12 hours. Because again, it's in military time. Two and a half hours from now for me is 0800. I add 12 hours to it, that's 2000. All right. Once you select and get that solidified, you select OK. And bada bing, bada boom, you now have arrow on your charts. All right. You can now close the navigator. All right. Now that you have arrow V3 on your charts, next thing to do is do what? save the template so you can easily add it to each chart. You don't want to have to go through resetting the money zone every time. All right. So you want to come up here to templates again, select templates, save template, select OK on the restrictions here, call it arrow, arrow V3, whatever you want to call it. I call it mine arrow V3. Hit save. I'm going to hit cancel because I've already saved mine. As you can see here, save that. Then when you go to another chart, Here's another chart. All I have to do is come back up here, select load template, select arrow V3, open, bing, bada, boom. I have the template on my chart now. And I can just change the time frame to come to whatever time frame I want to go to. That's how it works, guys. That's it. All right. That is it. All right. So now that we got that out of the way. Um, next is to show you guys, oh, hold on, let me check to see if there's any questions real quick. We got a few questions. Someone asked me, do I recommend if we trade on Sundays and Mondays? Um, uh, Monday night going into London session. Yes, but Sundays and Mondays, not necessarily, uh, strategy video number nine, which, we, which will be coming out this week. We'll explain why. So the market maker strategy will explain why. Again, uh, let me see here. If you have any questions about brokers, please DM me. Uh, let's see here. All right, let's go back to the chart. All right, so we're back on the charts here. All right, so we've saved templates for everything. Everything's been saved. Uh, please, you know, like I said, make sure you took the uh, pictures and whatnot so that you have that access, that information. Um, all right, so next. We get my phone so I can show you guys real quick. Next, you want to. Next, you want to download the MetaTrader 4 app to your phone. So please download MetaTrader 4, M E T A T R A D E R, number four, not five, number four, to your phone. All right. Now, because now what I'm going to do is show you guys how to set up notifications so you can get sent to your phone all right that way when you need the notification sent to your phone you don't have to be looking at the charts all day so every time an arrow pops up it will notify you on your phone that way you can you know jump on a, on the on, on a computer charts if you want to and if you don't want to you can say you just you don't have to worry about it all right so first things first 
you want to go to ins you know i'm sorry you want to go to um, tools under tools oops tools go down to options so tools options and then you want to come back here to uh notifications and then you want to select enable push notifications all right and then notify of trade transactions it's going to ask for your metal quotes id so what you want to do is under your app when you open it up you want to go to your settings chat and messages so whether you have an android phone or an iphone doesn't matter settings and then you want to go to the chat and messages all right under chat and messages at the very bottom of the screen you'll have a metal quotes id number my metal quotes id number underneath the, at the very bottom that number you want to place here and then you want to select test when you select test you should get a test message up here i'm not going to do it because i already have mine set up but once you have the test message set up then you're good. all right once test has come through you're good next you want to make sure that your cell phone whether you have an Android or iPhone, you want to go into the settings of your overall cell phone and go to notifications and make sure that you have notifications turned on for your phone, for that app, all right? Because if you don't have notifications set on, your phone will not send the notifications out, all right? Once that's done, select OK. I'm going to hit cancel because I already have mine set up on another account. That's it. Now you will get notifications for when every time an arrow pops up letting you know there may be an opportunity for a sale or a buy all right so before i move on let's go back to the question and answer box real quick uh we already went over uh we already went over the money zone you need to set the money zone from 12 a.m to 12 p.m Central standard time if you guys missed it uh so you know for the sake of the rest of the group we're going to continue on back office under uh, arrow setup I go over all of this, all right? Go over all of this. I gave you guys the settings for it, how to set it, how to know what time to set it for, all right? Uh, and so, you know, if you missed that, you know, please go watch those videos in the back office, all right? Uh, I would recommend starting to trade last session Monday night. This video for tonight will be sent in the Arrow Announcements channel tomorrow when it's done. Uh, being, um, you know, being, um, um, I forgot what they call it. They add certain things to it, they edit the video. So once the video is done being edited, it'll be put out in the announcements video. If you have the access to Arrow Announcements channel, Telegram channel, there are multiple sunday nights you know videos that i go over the exact same thing every sunday night you can go in there and find that information as well it doesn't matter what time zone you are in it matters what time your broker is all right that's all that matters convert whatever zone you're in to your broker time frame actually i'm sorry convert 12 a.m central time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time to whatever your broker's time is. Do not worry about what time frame you're in. 12 a.m. to 12 p.m., if you convert that to whatever time your broker has, like I told you guys, you'll be set up perfectly, all right? Uh, you'll be set up perfectly, all right? VPS does not turn off. So virtual private server is always running. It's the reason why the company selected to use virtual private servers. The virtual private server is always running. All right. If you have to reboot every hour, you may want to look at the speed of your internet or the speed of your computer. All right. Virtual uh, virtual uh, has helped reduce the lag in the v in the actual uh, VPS as well as the VPS has all been upgraded. So everyone has an upgraded VPS with more memory, stronger power VPS. Therefore, they should not see a lag uh, as they have been seeing. So if you continue to see one, you need, may need to look at your computer or your internet speed.
All right, back to the charts. All right, so now that we have Arrow set up on your and we have the notification set up to your phone, let's go over Arrow. What is Arrow? A visually aided software that gives you um, it's a visual aided software that gives you the representation of what the market is doing. All right. And then allows you to know when to enter certain trades based on certain strategies. All right. So how do you know what the market is doing? All right. So let's go back and look at it. If we zoom out. All right. So let's go over the components of the arrow software. You have these green zones and you have the red zone here. All right. The green zones are your support zones. They're like the floor. You drop a ball on the floor, it hits the floor, it bounces off. You see here, price comes down. These candlesticks here, these squiggly, we have called them, are price. That represent price. Price is moving up and down, up and down all day. When price hits the floor, it bounces off. When price hits the floor, it bounces off. Hits the floor, bounces off. Hits the floor, bounces off. When price hits the ceiling, it bounces off. So the red zones are resistance like the ceiling. Throw a ball at the ceiling, it hits the ceiling, it bounces off. That is all price does all day. All right. Now, when price breaks through the floor, the floor disappears. So you'll see these zones disappear. If price goes through it, these zones will disappear. If price goes through the red zone or through the ceiling, the zone will disappear. All right. That's a breakthrough. Price is broken through that level of support or resistance. All right. Next is the blue line. This blue line is moving up and down, up and down all day. It just signifies where price is going. And you see here, price is going up, price is going down, price is going up, and then eventually price will go back down, all right? Uh, when price is above the blue line, it's in a uptrend, all right? And most of the time, it's gonna be green. So if it's above the moving average, this is what this blue line is called, it's called a moving average, it's going to be green and in a uptrend. If it's below the moving average, most of the time it's going to be red and it's going to be in a downtrend, all right? Above the moving average, green uptrend, below the moving average, red downtrend, all right? Next is the shaded areas, these shaded gray areas. This is the money zone we talked about. This is a 12 hour time frame. On the M15 from this period separator, so this period separator, that's what these lines are called here, period separators, from line to line, that is a 24 hour period, all right? So 12 of the 24 hours is the money zone. That money zone is from 12 a.m. Central Standard Time to 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, all right? That is where over 80% of the money is traded. If you see here, outside of the money zone, price moves up and down, but not as much. Inside, bigger moves. Outside, smaller moves. Inside, bigger moves. Outside, smaller moves. Inside, bigger moves. All right. Every now and then, you'll see that there is a big move that happens outside of the money zone. But for the most time, there are bigger moves inside the money zone than there are outside because there's more liquidity. There's more volatility. There's more money being traded inside of the money zone than outside of the money zone. Now, the money zone only applies to Forex pairs. All right. Forex pairs. So if you're trading gold and cryptocurrency and oil and and all and, and, you know and, and you know stuff in indices you know like the S and P 500, it doesn't apply. Only to foreign exchange pairs. All right. Next, you have the arrow pips and then the zero. This is the pip counter. So it will tell you and I'll, every time you enter into a trade. Uh, and, you know, uh, matter of fact, I'll get into a trade real quick to show you guys how it works. I'm going to get into a sale. I'm going to get into a buy. All right. As you can see here, see here, it tells me what? It tells me that sale, I, I'm, I've got two trades on, Euro JPY. This one is red. This one is green. What that means is this Euro JPY trade is a sale. And I'm currently down two pips. So I'm negative pips. I'll explain pips in a second for those who are new. This Euro JPY entry is a buy because it's green. 
This is how you can tell if you're in a buy or a sell based on what color that these, uh, the words are, the currency pairs, all right? Overall, it says arrow pips. And it tells you overall, based, if you have multiple trades, it'll tell you if you are positive or negative. You don't have to do the guesswork of knowing if you are up or down. Like right now, we're down three pips. So we're down, we're negative. Uh, if one of these were up and one were down, it would do know the difference. So if I was plus 10 and minus two on another one, we'd be positive eight. And so it tells you your overall positions. All right. Let me close these out real quick. That is what the pip counter does. All right. And then last but not least, last but not least is the arrows. All arrows look the same, but there are three different strategies that go with the arrows. There is a counter trend strategy. So if the trend is up, it's giving you the opportunity of when there might be a sale but you don't always take it. You gotta wait for the rules to apply. And then there is a buy. I'm sorry, then there is a confirmed uh, trend change. So when trend has changed from down to up, you get an arrow like right here. That is a confirmed trend change. This right here is a counter trend. All right, as you see here, we're currently going up. This is a counter trend. It's telling you there might be a sale opportunity right here. This is the confirmed trend change. So we went from a down trend to officially uptrend. And then this arrow is a continuation of the uptrend. Continuation. Those are three strategies that are behind the arrows, but don't worry about none of that. The rules are very simple on how to use them. So before I move on to how to trade strategy number one, we'll go over some basics of um, pips. What is a pip? how to count pips, we'll go over lot sizes, what is a lot size, how to place your lot size, and then we'll go over, um, of course, how to put a trade on and how to move your take profit to stop loss. Once we go over those three, then I'll show you guys strategy number one, which is the foundation of Arrow, and then we'll be done for the day. All right, so before we go there, let me stop sharing and go answer any questions we may have. Um, As I explained before, guys, your VPS is in the cloud. It never stops running. Whether you close your computer, turn off your computer or not, your VPS is always running, all right? I'm not sure what you mean by arrow is constantly closing on you. Uh, I've never heard that before. So, um, Please explain a little more. Uh, let's see here. All right, so I've answered all the questions there. All right, in the chat, how do we find our broker's time zone? I just explained how to do that, guys. I just explained how to do that. So I'm not gonna go backwards for everybody else, but I, just, I already explained how to find a broker's server time. Uh, please watch either this recording or their videos already in the uh, back office. Uh, I'm sorry, in, in the, uh, not, yeah, in the back office. So in my setup video, but also there are videos in, um, the arrow announcements channel, Telegram channel. Arrow announcements channel is where all the videos will be. So whether it be live trading sessions, we post a link there. 
Uh, and actually, you can go to Avoya Prime's um, YouTube channel. Those are where all the videos are at as well. You can go on the YouTube channel and find all the videos there as well. All right, let's jump back on the charts. All right. So let's go over a few things. So we're going to go over um, pips, lot sizes, and then how to place a trade. So pips, pips, P-I-P-S stands for price interest point. All right. Um, pips are how you count um, the price, the, the movement in price. All right. All right. Pips is how you count the movement in price. So as you can see here, this is the Euro JPY currency pair, the Euro Japanese Yen, EUR JPY. As you can see here on the side, it gives you the price. You know, like right here, this is 126.010. So we'll use that as a demonstration. So the current price is 126.010, all right? That's that price right there, right? Boom, right there. One, this red line is showing you the price at 126.010. That's what we're going to use as a demonstration. As you can see here, if you go to GBP USD, GBP USD has a different price. Euro JPY shows what? Euro JPY shows, uh oh. All right. Euro JPY shows three numbers after the decimal place. GBP USD shows five numbers after the decimal place. All right. So they're all different. All right. So you have to know how to be able to count the different types of currency pairs based on the way they're written. They're only going to be written four ways. There'd be some currency pairs that have two numbers, three numbers, four numbers, or five numbers after the decimal place. So the two we're going to look at has this one has five and this one has three. All right. We're not going to look at two and four because they here's how they go together. If there are two or three numbers after the decimal place, you follow the same rule. If there are four or five numbers after the decimal place, you follow the same rule. There's only two rules. So we'll start off with two and three. All right. If two, three numbers after decimal, then pip is the second digit. Okay. So if there are two or three numbers after the decimal place, then the pip is the second digit. So here, 126.010, the second number, which is the one, is your pip. So if price goes from if price goes from 126.010 to 126.020 that is one pip up all right if price goes from 126.010 to 126.020, that is one pip going up. So price has moved up one pip. If price goes from 126.010 to 126.000, that is one pip down. All right. So now we're going the opposite direction. 126.010 down to 126.000. That is one pip going down. All right, one pip going down. All right, and then 
We'll do two more. Price goes from 126.010 to 126.110. That is 10 pips up. Just like in school, you carry the one. Just like in school, you carry the one. Let's move this up here. Move that up here. Make a little room for the next one. All right, so let me do the last one. And we'll rehash real quick. The price goes from 126.010 to 125.910. That is 10 pips down. All right, so let's rehash it again. Let's rehash. Pips. Is how you count the movement in price for currency pairs. You count it in pips. If there are two or three numbers after the decimal place, the pip is the second digit. So 126.010 has three numbers after the decimal place. Therefore, the second number, which is the one, is your pip. So if price goes from 126.010 to 126.020, Price has increased one pip. If price goes from 126.010 to 126.000, then price has, re has decreased one pip. It's gone down one pip. And then, of course, if you go from 126.010 to 126.110, that's 10 pips. You've gone up 10 pips. And then the opposite direction. If price goes from 126.010 to 125.910, you've gone down 10 pips. All right. Let's go over to GPUSD. That has five numbers after the decimal place. So the one we're going to select today is going to be, uh, where are we at? We'll go with. one point three six seven five zero. That red line is at the price of 1.36750. All right, so 1.36750. There are five numbers after the decimal place. All right, so the rule is if there are uh, four or five numbers, if four or five numbers after the decimal place, then the pip is the fourth digit. All right. So if there are four or five numbers after the decimal place, the pip is the fourth number. All right. So it's either going to be the second or the fourth. If there are two or three numbers after the decimal place, the pip is going to be the second. Four or five after the decimal place, the pip is going to be the fourth second or fourth. Those are the rules. So we have five numbers at their decimal place. The fourth number is our pip. One, two, three, four, the five. The five is the pip. All right. So knock this out real quick. Three, six, seven, five, oh, to one point three, six, seven, four, oh, is down one pip. Let me write these out for you guys real quick and then we'll talk about them.
All right, so 1.36750. That is the price we're looking at. That's this price right here with the red line. All right. Remember, the rule is if there are four or five numbers after the decimal place, the fourth number is your pip. Well, we've got five numbers. Therefore, the fourth number, which is the five, is our pip. So if price goes from 1.36750 to 1.36740, that means price has went down one pip. If price goes from 1.36750 to 1.36760, price has gone up one pip. All right. Now, if price goes from 1.36750 to 1.36650, price has gone down 10 pips. And lastly, if price has gone from 1.36750 to 1.36850, price has gone up 10 pips. That is how you count pips when it comes to foreign exchange currency pairs. This is only for currency pairs. This is not in for indices or gold or cryptocurrency. This is just for foreign exchange pairs. This is where I recommend you guys start off with until you get the experience to be able to go uh, further. All right. Now. Now I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, we'll come back and talk about lot sizes a second. Let me see what questions we have in the Q&A. All right, if you're having issues with your notifications stopping, you need to reboot your VPS. A lot of people say they have and have it. All right, as well as you need to download the newest version of Arrow. It just came out. The newest version was just released yesterday. All right, most people didn't even use it yesterday. So, you know, to trade currency, I mean, to trade cryptocurrency. So it's just brand new live. Reboot your VPS, download the newest version of Arrow on, and then let's see what happens. All right. All right. Uh, someone asked about the top five currency pairs. I will give you guys a list of the 10 pairs that I recommend. Of course, you can trade anything you want to, but I'm going to give you the 10 pairs that I recommend to trade the software with. All right. So we'll go back into charts here. All right. So now that we know how to uh, count pips, uh, real quick, I'll tell you guys the 10 pairs I forget that I recommend. If you've already took a screenshot or a picture of this, you already have these down here. Here are the 10 pairs I recommend. GBP USD. That's the Great Britain Pound US dollar. GBP CHF, the Great Britain Pound Swiss franc. GBP JPY, that's the Great Britain Pound Japanese yen. GBP NZD, that's the Great Britain Pound New Zealand dollar. GBP CAD. That's the Great Britain Pound Canadian dollar. And then the GBP odd, GBP AUD, which is the GBP, the Great Britain Pound Australian dollar. All right. Those are six of the Great Britain Pound pairs that I recommend. And then the next are four Euro pairs. First is the Euro GBP, which is the Euro Great Britain Pound. Next is the Euro AUD, E-U-R-A-U-D, which is the Euro Australian dollar. Next is E-U-R-N-Z-D, which is the Euro New Zealand dollar. 
And then last but not least is the EUR JPY, which is the Euro Japanese Yen. Those are the 10 currency pairs that I recommend you start with when starting off with uh, Aero. All right. Those are the 10. If you don't have all these, to add these, you want to come up here to where it's plus sign. Underneath file, you have a little white box uh, and then a green plus sign. And it says create new chart. You want to select that and you can find all your Forex pairs here. Currency pairs there, FX majors, FX crosses, whatever it is your broker calls them. All right. If you don't see everything that I've asked about, or I've told you guys to look at, what you want to do is you want to come to view symbols. Under view symbols here, you can go under here and find all the currency pairs you need. So depending on your broker, they may label these folders differently. All right. So mine has FX majors and then FX. Some brokers just say Forex pairs and everything's underneath that. I have three categories for Forex pairs. I have the FX majors. So these are the seven major Forex pairs. I have the crosses, which are the other non-major pairs. And then I have uh, the exotics, which are the exotic currency pairs. All right. So if you want to come in here and add one, all you do is come in here and you double click on the box, the gray shaded box, until it turns gold. When it turns gold and you select all the ones you need, you close and you can come up here and you can find the one you just added. USD, I just added that one. All right. That's how you go in there and add those. Again, view, symbols, find the currency pairs in here you want to add, double click on them so they can add, be added, and then, they, then hit close. Once that's done, everything you need will be underneath the add new chart, the little green plus sign here. You come here and add all you want. Once you add, select the chart, it will bring it up very last. Down here at the bottom of the screen, it'll be the last chart you bring up. All right? That is how you add currency pairs. All right, next, going to go over lot sizes. Let's find a clean screen. All right, lot sizes. There are three types of lot sizes. Lot size is the amount of money you are wagering. Oh, I'm sorry, you are investing. All right, lot size is the amount of money you are investing, just to keep it in, in plain, simple terms. All right, so there are three types of lot size. The first one is the micro lot. Micro lot is written 0 0.01 to 0 0.09. That is a 10 cents. investment all right let's put it down here so you guys can clearly see it all right boom 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 let me just add all these real quick let me write, type these all out and then we'll go over them All right, so with lot size, lot size is the amount of money you are wagering, all right? So first, there is the micro lot. 0 0.01 to 0 0.09 is how you write the micro lots. A 0 0.01 lot size is a 10 cents lot size. So every pip move is 10 cents. So if price goes up 10 cents, that's to be a one pip, that's 10 cents. If it goes up 10 pips, that's 10 cents times 10 pips, 
which is one dollar all right next is the mini lot the mini lot is written as 0 0.1 to 0 0.99 so that's 0 0.1 is a one dollar investment 0 0.99 is a nine dollar and 90 cents investment so if you use a 0 0.3 that is a three dollar lot size which means that every pip move whether it be up or down is three dollars all right so if you move if it moves 10 dot 10 pips in the right direction so let's say you say right here i want to buy it goes up 10 pips with a three dollar lot size you just made three dollars times 10 pips guess what that's thirty dollars now if you say it's a sale right here and it goes up 10 pips instead of down then you're now negative thirty dollars all right and then last but not least is the standard lot the standard lot is written as 1.00 to infinity the more money you have in your account the more uh, sorry, the larger the lot size you can put on but for uh basic purposes the 1.00 is the standard lot that is a ten dollar investment so if price goes like we talked about here up 10 pips in your favor so you said it's a buy right here it goes up 10 pips ten dollars times 10 pips is 100 bucks if it goes down 10 pips and you said it's supposed to go up now you are negative 100 all right that is lot sizes all right, real nutshell all right real simple so now how do we combine this to put trades on i'm glad you asked so first thing you want to do is to put a trade on teach you how to put a trade on and then i will show you guys how to trade with the arrow software uh and then you guys should be good to go in starting your demo accounts first thing you want to do is you want to bring up the one click trading button so you want to right click on the black of the screen select one click trading this button comes up here all right you want to hit sell or buy it's going to give you a nice little general clause select i understand and hit okay and then now you'll be able to do what put lock size trades on so up here you have three different buttons so oh, four buttons really you have the lot size button here up and down so i can change my lot size lot size is here in the middle so if i want to change this to a dollar lot size i just double click here and type 0 0.1 that is 0 0.10 is a dollar lot size remember it's the mini lot one dollar investment if i want to go up a little bit i can just click the button here on the right hand side and take it up now we're at 0 0.2 here this button sells this button buys so if I hit sale, because we see prices starting to head down, I'm gonna hit sale here. You can see here at the white line, it put the green, a dotted green line. That's our entry. So this white line is the bid. You're gonna always sell at the bid. All right, the red line is the ask line. You're gonna always buy at the ask. So if I put a buy, boom, it's right at the green line. All right, right at the green line. But we know, you know it's going down, so I'm going to get rid of the buy. I'm going to get rid of the buy there. We know it's going down. All right, now, right now I am negative three or negative two pips. All right, that's the difference. You're like, well, Nate, it's you just got in a trade. You're right. Why is why am I negative from the beginning? It's always because of the spread. The spread is the difference between the red and the white line. So right now it's two pips. There's two pip difference between the spread. All right. Actually, it's more than that's three, uh, but price is moving down in our direction, so we're good. You can see here, three eight nine to four one six, thirty nine one to four one six, two point five. So it's about two and a half pips on the spread. All right, just counting pips, like I taught you guys, counting pips. Now, uh, before we get into profit, both the red line and the white line must go below my dotted green line. All right. Just so you know, both the red line and white line have to be below the green line before I'm in profit. And you'll know we're in profit because this right here will be green. Right now it says negative one, it's red. When it's positive, it'll be green. So it'll, it'll get there, it's, it's heading in the right direction. Next is, I'm gonna show you guys how to set your stop loss and to set your take profit. All right, how do I set the st stop loss and take profit? Now, what does stop loss and take profit mean? Take profit means that if the red line and the white line cross my take profit line before it crosses my 
stop loss line, I make money and it will automatically take me out of my trade at that price. If it hits, if the red line, you know, and white line go, go above my stop loss line first, then I will automatically lose a certain amount of money at that price. A stop loss is a level as a, 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 um, a stop loss is a strategy or is a tactic to uh, manage your risk. You don't want to just trade with no stop loss because if price keeps going the opposite direction, you know, you could lose all your money. You want to risk a certain amount of money so that you can make a certain amount of money. All right. Now, we're in a sale. We selected sale. You can see here, it has our uh, contract number here. It says sale and it tells us 0 0.20. That's the lot size we used. So sale means we want price to go down. Therefore, our take profit needs to be below price. So you want to put your mouse onto the green dotted line. That's your entry. It says drag to modify. You want to click and hold and then drag the line down. And you can see over here, it tells you your contract number. It says take profit. And then it says how much money you'll make at certain price points. Let's go up here to, it says 165 pips. You see there? So at 165 pips, we're going to make $25.54. All right. Now, that is not 165 pips. That is 16.5 pips. So keep that in mind. Anytime you see that, the third number is, a, you know, there's a decimal place there. So that's 16.5. So once I got it to the point where I want to, and, and, I, and I, for arrow, the strategy is your take profit is going to be 20 pips. So we want to go down to 200 pips. All right, that's 202. That's close enough. Let go. Now our take profit is set at 20 pips. If you put your line, your mouse over it, you see it says drag to modify. You see it says profit, $31.26 USD. And it says pips, 202. That is 20.2 pips. So if price goes below that, both the red and white line, go below this red line, the trade will automatically close out with that profit of $31.27. As you can see here, we're at zero right now. So right now we are broke even. And now we're up one pip, we're plus one. So on this sale, we are plus one pip. So we're up one pip right now. That's good. You, you love to see green, green is good. All right, so now that we've set take profit, now we want to do what? Now we want to set stop loss. Stop loss is gonna be the opposite direction of the way we want the trade to go or the way we anticipate the trade to go, all right? We put a sale on, so we anticipating price going down. However, we're going to be wrong. Even arrow is not a foolproof strategy. There is no 100% way to trade for it. You're going to, you're going to lose some trades. That's just the way it is. So you want to minimize your losses. All right. And to do so, you want to take this same thing, your entry line, put your mouse over it until it says drag to modify, click it and you wanna move the line up, all right? Now this time, you wanna take it to 400 pips. That's negative 401. So that means 40.1 pips, all right? And you can see there, we have our contract number. It says SL, that means stop loss. And then it says negative $62.08. Negative 401 pips, which is negative 40.1. You let go. So the strategy is 20 pip take profit, 40 pip stop loss, all right? you're risking 4% to make 2%. Reason being is, number one, as you get better as a trader, you'll know how to minimize, you know, and not risk as much. But in the beginning, the risk is two to one ratio so that you stay conscious that you have a 40 pip stop loss, which means you should not over leverage your account, which means that if you have, again, I recommend from a leverage standpoint, I'll write this down. I recommend from a lot size, you want to use a 0 0.01, use a 0 0.01 lot size for every $100 in your account. All right. 
use a 0.01 lot size for every $100 in your account. So if you have a $500 account, you should be using a 0.05 lot size. That's 50 cents per pip. Because what that means is you will have to lose 1,000 pips before you lose all your money, all right? And using arrow, uh, you have a, you know, uh, you have the opportunity, you know, that's very difficult to do with arrow unless you're just not following the rules. Let's put it that way, all right? Um, so yeah, 0 0.01 for every lot size. So to use a 0 0.1 lot size, a dollar lot size, you know, I recommend having a thousand dollars in your account. To use the standard lot, 1.00, I recommend having $10,000 in your account, all right? That's just my recommendation. You can do what you want, it's your money, your investment. This is just what I recommend so that you can, you know, uh, ensure proper risk management, all right? You don't wanna use huge lot sizes on your trades. You wanna build your account up over time. And then as you become a more skillful trader, you will understand the tactics it takes to build your account up faster, um, and you'll understand the risks, all right? So I've shown you guys how to put a trade on. And again, to get this one click button, you wanna right click on the black of the screen, select one click trade. That turns it off, you do it again, turns it back on. You can adjust your lot size here in the middle, sell on the left, buy on the right. All you have to do is click it, it's that simple, that, that easy. It'll put the entry for you. The sell entry will always be at the white line the red entry, I'm no, sorry, the buy entry will all get the red line. All right, to see your trades and their, how much money you're actually in, you can see your pips here, but if you wanna go right here under charts, there's a there's terminal. If you select terminal, it's a little blue and white looking piece of paper, you'll see your trade. And you can see here, contract number, what time you put the trade on, what type of trade it is, it's a sale trade for here, the size 0 0.20, the symbol EURAUD, which you can see right here, EURAUD, tells you what price that you put the sale at. It tells you what your stop loss is and your take profit is. These will be blank unless you set them, all right? Then it tells you what the current price is. It tells you what your commission is. So right now, it's a dollar commission. So what that means is, that I'm wagering $2 per pip. So if I close the trade out at one pip in profit, that's $2, I will only get to keep $1 because that commission is $1 for the broker. So if I catch $2 times 10 pips is $20, I get to keep 19 bucks because I have to pay the commission to the broker. That's how the brokers make their money. Next is the swap fee. So the swap fee is another fee for holding trades long-term, all right? So every time if you got into this sale trade uh, back here, if you are holding your trade past the period separator, and this period separator happens every day at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's when the new Forex day starts. So if you're holding a trade from one day to the next day, they're gonna charge you a swap fee. That's just another way that they charge and make money, all right? And then all in all, you'll see here, you're, if you're in profit or not, it'll show your overall profit of trade and then your overall profit overall, you know, when you take into consideration your commissions. To close out your trade, all you have to do is you see here, we're up $1.39, but overall we're up 39 cents because of the dollar commission. To close the trade, just hit the X button. Once you hit the X button, everything goes away. We just made 24 cents because we were up $1.24 minus the dollar commission, we just made 24 cents on that trade. If you want to see old trades, select account history. You come down here to account history, you come to the very bottom, you can see here all your old trades, all right? And it closes, just select terminal again, and that closes and now you have the full chart. That's it guys. Now. Before I move on, let me, okay, there's no questions in the q and I'm gonna show you guys strategy number one for Arrow. All right, and then uh, you guys will be good to go. So, first thing you wanna do, let's go to a different chart here. 
All right, we'll go to the Great Britain Pound Japanese Yen chart. So there are three steps to strategy number one. Strategy number one is called the bag entry method. Bag stands for bounce, arrow, go. All right. So first thing you want to do, step number one, is zoom out all the way. Here, this chart right here, these magnifying glass, one is a plus, one's a minus. So hit the minus until you can't push it anymore. It's just grayed out. That allows you to zoom out all the way. And now you can do what? Now you can see all, everything, all right? So now you wanna do is count your zones. Do you have more green zones than red zones or more red zones than green zones? We see we have more green than red, so we know we're in an uptrend, all right? If we have more red than green, we're in a downtrend, which means we should only be looking for sell trades. But we have more greens than red, therefore we should only be looking for buys, all right? If you have even number of zones, so let's say we have two down here and then two up here, two red, two green, then what you do is you wanna measure the distance between your two zones. So for example, I'll zoom in, you wanna get your crosshair here. This icon right here is a crosshair. You wanna put it on one zone, take it to the next zone like that. Just for example, this is a green zone, this is a red zone. And you see the middle number there, the middle number says 221, 221. Like I taught you guys, that's really 22.1. So if the distance between the zones is more than 50 pips, you can take trades in both directions. Only if you have the same number of zones. You measure the insides of the both inner zones, all right? And if, they're the same, if they're, you have more than 50 pips, then you can take a trade in both directions, all right? But right now we know we have more green than red. All right, so we zoom in. Step number two, only take trades inside the money zone. So inside the money zone, all right? So we know only take trades inside a money zone, all right? Step number three, only take bag entry trades in the direction of the trend inside the money zone. So we know the direction of the trend is up, so we're only looking for up arrows. We got up arrow here, up arrow here. So when this up arrow came, popped up, you would get a notification. You would come to the chart. You would zoom out. You're like, okay, I'm looking for buys. Yes, I'm inside the money zone. All right, I got up arrow. Does it qualify? Let's see. Price bounced off of the green zone right here. Went up, turned green candle. We had an up arrow. We entered the trade. This arrow will only show up when this candle closes. So when this candle right here next to it opens, that's when it's time for us to buy. So we put our buy right here where that red line is at. Let me screw it up a little bit. There we go. So right where that red line is at, on this candle right here. Let me draw, boom, this candle right here. Because the arrow will pop up when the previous candle closes. So when this candle closes and this candle opens is when the arrow pops up. Therefore, we put our trade right there, our buy. All right, and then we put our take profit at 20 pips. So we see 141.838 is our entry. Therefore, 142.038 is 20 pips. Right there. That is 20 pips. So from here to there is 20 pips. As you can clearly see, it went down a little bit and then it went right up to our take profit. Bounce, arrow, go. All right. Take profit is there, but our stop loss would be at 141.438, which would be, it'd be off the screen. All right. It'd be off the screen. 20 pip take profit, 40 pip stop loss. As you can see here, we can measure it. Price went backwards on us, four pips. So if we were using a 0 0.1 lot size, we would be negative $4 at the most, and then it went up and we would have made our 20 bucks minus our commission. That is strategy number one. Identify the trend by zooming all the way out, counting your zones, more greens and reds, great. Zoom in, only take trades inside a money zone. So between 12 a.m. Central Standard Time and 12 p.m. Central Standard Time, all right? and then only take bag entry trades in the direction of the trend. So we had a bounce, 
we have multiple bounces. Bounce here, no green yet. Bounce here, no arrow yet. Bounce here, turn green, and we got an arrow. Buy 20 pips. We got our 20 pips. That trade is done. All right. Let me jump into the Q&A box and see what we have here. Q&A. We just went over those three steps again. So, yeah, I just went over those again. All right. Um, that's it, guys. Any questions? Give it a couple seconds here, a couple minutes for any questions we may have. I don't know what you mean by strike rate. What is what is strike rate? What do you mean? What is strike rate? Strategy nine this week, guys. Strategy nine this week. Win percentage. So the win percentage is, is it varies depending on your skill set. All right. Uh, depending on if you enter in correctly. But the beta test group has been able to identify that the winning ratio is over 85 percent, 85 or higher with the bag entry method. All right. If you have, again, guys, so your trade cannot be in the zone. All right? So let's go show the screen again. All right? It has to be outside of the zone. It has to bounce and then get the arrow. All right? So, for example, let's see if I can find one real quick. Right here. This is arrows inside the zone, but the candle's outside the zone. That's fine. Like right here, arrows outside the zone, but the candle's outside the zone. As long as you have more than 20 pips from your entry to the next opposite color zone, let's zoom out real quick. This is GBPNZD. Oops. You see, we have more green than red, so we know we're only looking for buys. So we zoom in and we see right here, arrows in the zone, that's fine because the candle's outside the zone. The arrow just points to the candle that qualifies. Therefore, we enter in next candle. So from here to the next opposite color zone is 48 pips. We're good. We have, as long as we have 20 pips or more, we enter the trade. Now, this arrow and this candle are inside the zone. That is invalid. It must be a bounce arrow. Bounce off the zone. Your candle must be above the zone or below the zone if it's a sale. All right? It can't be in the zone. All right? Do not overthink this, guys. This is a very simplistic strategy. Do not overthink the strategy itself. All right? GBP USD last arrow. Let's go look at it. As we already know, we're more green than red. So we're only looking for buys. Last arrow for GP USD bounced off the green zone. We had an up arrow. We take the buy, but this is outside of the money zone. Therefore, guess what? We don't take this trade. The probability of winning a trade outside the money zone dissipates because there's less volatility, as we talked about. You want to take these trades inside the money zone. If you want to take them outside the money zone, you can feel free to do so. All right. But you must understand your probability of winning will go down. All right. So someone asked a question about our trades valid if we have multiple arrows, but one bounce. So let's go look at that real quick. Here's the rule. Let me go find one that qualifies real quick. All 
All right, great. Euro JPY, we zoom out. We've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. We got five green, four red. So we're in an uptrend, all right? Only looking for buys. As you see here, we have a bounce and an arrow. So bounce, arrow, go inside the money zone. And we have another one here. The rule is if you have two consecutive, so two arrows in a row of the same direction, so we're only looking for buys, up, up. You can take both arrows as long as they meet the rules. Bounce, arrow, go. We already had a bounce, so you can take the second one if it's more than 20 pips away from the next zone. This one is more than 20. This one is too close to the next zone, so we don't take that trade. The only reason you take the second one in a row is if you have more than 20 pips to the next opposite color zone. It's bouncing off the green, therefore the opposite color zone is gonna be the red, all right? Now, have a down arrow in between, do not take the second up arrow. The down arrow kills the momentum. It must be two consecutive, up, up, just like that. If there's a down arrow in between, do not take it. All right, guys, do not overcomplicate the strategy. It doesn't matter when the bounce is. Because we're only trading inside the money zone, the bounce is always going to happen same day. You only care about the money zone. That's it. That 12 hours is always the same day. Therefore, all you care about is the bounce. Don't overcomplicate it. Asking these questions and thinking, oh, what about this? What about that? Don't only take and use what I tell you to use because that's the base of the strategy. Just keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. People have said the same thing. Oh, it is too simple. And then they follow those rules and they find themselves winning more often than they lose. Keep it simple. All right? That's the reason why those people you'll see inside the chat group are winning so often with BAG because they are keeping it simple and they're not overthinking it. They're not overanalyzing it. All right? Someone says they're trading at 8 a.m. and they feel like they're missing all the bag entries. It happens. There are other pairs of trade. So if you're trading earlier in the daytime, you don't want to trade late at night or early in the morning, you want to trade 8, 9, 10 o'clock in, in the morning, then you may need to look at trading some of the New York pairs. All right? Some of the other pairs. The 10 pairs that I have, they are pairs that really move during London session, which is 2 a.m. Central Standard Time to 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. Um, but they also move in New York session. There are other pairs you can trade as well that will allow you to yield some results during New York session if that's the time that you have to trade. All right, guys, I'm gonna give it uh, another minute here to ask any more questions, and then we're gonna go ahead and shut it down. Got any questions, guys? Please put it in the Q and A. None. All right, guys. I, I appreciate the time. Uh, tonight, make sure you trade responsibly, and I'll see you guys in the funny papers. Thanks. <laughs>